All right, here we go. Good evening. This is the FAFSA overview. I am Lacey Roberts. I'm Carol Evans. Thanks for joining us. And hopefully there'll be um, more people joining as we go through the evening because this is a super important topic. Um, today we're going to talk about what is the FAFSA. We're going to talk about how your child applies. We're going to talk about what is required as a parent. We're going to talk about when you apply and the process of application. However, we want to give a disclaimer that both of us um, have completed it um, a few times, but it does change every time um, they do it, it seems. So just be as patient as you can when you're going through this process. And the trick is to have all your documents ready. That, those are the best disclaimers that we can give you. They've actually revamped it completely for next school year for the 24-25 um, application period. So it's going to look different for everyone. What we're presenting tonight is what it will look like for that 24-25 application period. Um, but FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. A lot of colleges will require students to fill out the FAFSA forms because they will also use that to determine scholarship eligibility within the university or college. Um, but FAFSA will look at grants and lo loans and work study programs that are available. Um, they are uh, income based. Um, you do have to be a U.S. citizen and have to be a permanent resident. And like I said, it will let you and your student know how much aid that you qualify for. Again, I wouldn't go in thinking I'm not going to qualify at all because a lot of colleges have their own scholarship programs and they use the FAFSA form to assign an award um, scholarships and aid too. So you do have to demonstrate financial need. Um, there's a program of study and that they have to be enrolled um, in a college. At least half time, correct? Or, um, sorry, college or career school. Yes. Yeah. So once you create a FSA ID, you have to go in just like um, many of these websites and you have to create an ID. Once you do that, the best advice we can give you is to prepare all of the documents that they're going to require of you. They're literally going to say things like on line 37, enter the number on your W-2 or on, on, on your tax documents, enter form 10040EZ, enter this line. It's literally going to be that specific. So the things that we ask that you prepare are your demographics information, your social security number, your student's social security number, any other parent um, that, that might be a, a part of this equation, uh, tax documents, tax documents for your student if they filed them, um, schools of interest that they want to send this information to, any W-2s for everybody involved, and any bank statements. Additionally, they do ask about secondary um, sources of revenue. So if you have any of that, you're going to want to include that as well. I will add, um, Lacey and I have been through this recently, <laughs> and it is a painstaking process. Um, it You do have to set up out enough time to complete it and it will save your information if you get frustrated or just need a break from it and you can go back and add into just make sure you save it as you go along um, and the thing for me that I always I do not have on hand is my daughter's social security number you have to have that no matter what to get in so keep that on hand um, so Students will go in and parents also, both are gonna to have to create a 
um, FAFSA ID. Um, it'll be a username and password. You will electronically sign any forms through FAFSA. You have to have that username and ID in order to do that. Um, and then they will also recommend different websites that you might click on. There's like a promissory note that you might need to sign. You're gonna need that FAFSA ID and then it's gonna take you to another site. Um, it says average 30 minutes. It took, it took me and my daughter a lot longer. <laughs> um, and then they do uh, provide assistance. Looking at what it was and what it's going to in the 24-25 school year, it does seem a lot more user-friendly than in the past, um, but we won't really know until we delve into it. Um, but yeah. you can access the forms um, through studentaid.gov. The other thing that I would add is to apply as early as you can once you gather those documents, because both Carol and I, as we went through this process, needed to um, add in some additional information because um, it's pretty common and that takes a while for them to review it and get it back to you. And you want to be sure you are in the best opportunity for aid. Also, please write your, your FSA ID down. Write it down somewhere, put it somewhere safe. Um, you're going to need it to access the U.S. Department of Ed websites. Sometimes you have to put it in if your child is, is applying to colleges through the Common App. You have to put your, you have to link your, F your FAFSA information there as well. So you're gonna want that, you're gonna, um, need it while you're repaying any student loans. You're going to need your um, ID to be kept close to you, just like you would your social security card, because it's a legal signature that they'll use. When you go to the federal student aid website, you get started there. But again, it's very important. You're going to be doing this every year. Each school has their own deadline for when they want the, the FAFSA in. Funding is always first come, first serve. So the application process and getting your taxes done and all of that extra early is super important for the next several years. I, we cannot stress that enough. Getting in the form as soon as possible, because like I said, universities use the FAFSA form for their own financial aid also, and it runs out. So you don't want to wait until the last second and then there not be um, any information left. So I do want to add that in the past, um, FAFSA forms were available to fill out October 1st because they've launched this new form it now will open in December. So if you wanna make a note of that, um, get it done as early as possible. Um, okay, so this is straight from the FAFSA website. Um, we've tried to condense it as much as possible and just get you familiar with what you and your student is going to see when they fill out the forms. Um, and we've started with the student landing page. Um, this is what it looks like. They're gonna start a new form if they have never applied before. If they have, they can edit an existing form. When they log in, they're gonna to go to the login screen, enter their login information. Of course, that FSA ID, username and password. Um, those credentials, of course, if they need to create an account, they can do that down below. One thing that can make your life a little bit easier is consenting for the IRS to share your federal tax information. So if you filed taxes, there is a link and you would, you know, select, get your tax forms from the IRS, you agree to share them, and then it will upload all of your information. And that makes it a little bit easier in you know, not having to go through each form and type it in manually. You do not have to give consent. You can do it manually. 
Um, it was a time saver for me to be able to just say, yeah, go ahead and take it. Um, but you have to approve it and you have to provide consent if they're going to do that. When it says tell about your parents, they're going to have to answer um, questions about whether they are dependent or not. Um, they need to provide um, information about the marital status of their parent, and then they're required to invite their parent to fill out the FAFSA. Sorry, I'm typing. Um, I was just saying, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to raise your hand or type them in the chat. Um, so then they will ask for every type of personal information under the sun um, about the student and about their parents. And um, they will fill in, and I might be jumping ahead of myself, but they're gonna ask all the information about your child, um, what's in their bank account, uh, what income that they have made, and then they, they um, also are going to um, enter in the information for you. Um, they're gonna need your social security number. They're gonna need an email address um, that is current that you have access to because you are gonna receive an invite based on what they enter into uh, these boxes right here. And then the, the student is going to select the colleges that they want the financial information to go to. They can select up to 20 because sometimes that's going to make a difference. Let's be real. Um, the amount of aid that a school gives is, is going to be a factor when considering which school your child ultimately will attend. You can select up to 20. You can change position of the selected schools. You can... Um, continue once a school um, has has been selected, you can um, change them out as necessary. And I want to add 20 seems like a lot, but for schools that, that they may be on the fence about, it doesn't, there's no fee for however many schools you put on the form. It doesn't count against them at all. So um, like Lacey said, it's best to have more on it than less because somebody might, another school might come in and offer a lot more money, not necessarily through the federal government, government, but through their private scholarships that would lessen the cost more than anyone else. That's actually what happened to my daughter. So it happens quite frequently because um, I've seen it in several kids recently. The federal government didn't give a ton, but then um, because they applied timely, they were able to, to access those institution pockets um, and that worked out. Yeah, and it's you can compare and contrast also with what's given. I mean, you're gonna have to, what my daughter and I did was look at the three top colleges, how much aid the college was awarding how much tuition was for the year and try and figure out which one was the best route for us. Um, so it's a process. Um, once your student puts in all of their information, they're going to acknowledge the terms and the, and the conditions, and then they will sign their section of the form. They will sit, they will um, select submit, but it is not completed yet. So their part is done, but until the parent submits their information, that form is not submitted. Um, so if they do it December 1st and you wait until March 1st, the government gets it March 1st, and that's when they look at what aid is available. So the parents have a login, uh, a login landing page as well. They have to enter their FSA. They have to acknowledge, of course, the terms and conditions. Um, they have to sign and submit the student FAFSA, FAFSA forms as well. I always want to say FAFSA, but it's not. It's FAFSA. <laughs> you get an abbreviated. Oh, oh sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Once um, the parent submits everything, then there is a confirmation report that the parent gets. 
It has the tracking information for the student. It has what happens next. And then the student receives the detailed information, um, which is going to be a few pages long. It prints out everything that was answered on the form and what was what was said for each part. Um, once this congratulations confirmation with the tracking information is sent, then the form is now submitted and sent in for processing. If the student has not started the FAFSA first, parents can initiate. The email is sent to the student notifying that it was submitted on their behalf. Students must provide consent, sign the form, and make any corrections. A lot of times parents are still thinking that their student is in high school and they can just do the things, but in, in college, the, it's student-driven. So this is what the summary is going to look like once everything is um, finished. It's four sections. It'll give you an eligibility overview of what um, what the student may be eligible for as far as um, subsidized and unsubsidized. And then in here also will um, be the section for the FAFSA, the answers on the form, like I said, with that receipt, that's what your child will get also. School information is gonna have um, all of the information about the schools that your child selected and which schools they selected. So it's a quick place to look to see if, you know, maybe another school popped up that they're interested in um, and you wanna make sure that they're included on the FAFSA form. Um, if they're not, then you would go in and edit. Um, and then there's also a next steps tab. Um, it will also show you, um, I don't, it's kind of in the middle of the page, when the application was received, when it was processed, um, it might say processing, and then you will also be able to print for your records. Um, if you don't physically print it, I strongly recommend that you save it as a PDF um, so that you have it to look at in the future. The eligibility overview, this is the page every uh, parent wants to see high numbers on. Um, this is the page where they tell you what they're going to give you. These are estimates. Each school is going to kind of um, go by their own criteria. It's going to show the federal aid that you might be eligible for. It's going to give you a student aid index. Um, it's going to give, uh, of course, amounts for Pell Grants, amounts for direct loans, amounts for subsidized loans, amounts for work study. Um, keep in mind when you're looking at this, that work study is money that goes directly to the student in their hand in the form of a check. So when you look at that, don't um, calculate that in. Um, the financial aid office can provide the final determination of eligibility. And that's the financial aid office for your school is that's where those private scholarships and um, grants might come into. Um, so the school information tab I kind of talked about before, it's it displays what colleges or career schools have been selected to receive that information. And then also here, a nice little uh, tool is you can compare graduation, retention, transfer rates, um, default rates, median debt at completions and average annual cost of school. So if you just wanna have a quick glance of how much like maybe your top three schools are gonna cost, this is a good tool to use. Um, so you can compare and figure out, you know, which one might be the best choice financially. Uh, um, and then also the graduation rates and transfer rates and things like that can, you know, tell you the, the students that go there, how interested, um, you know, how engaging the programs may be. I tell you, I was surprised on the graduation retention and transfer rates we're much lower in all of the colleges than what I'm used to 
looking at. Like our goal in high school is 100% graduation rate, but the graduation rates for colleges are significantly lower. But it's something to take into consideration. You might have a college that's at 70% and another one at 25%, and that's going to give you pause of, you know, why is the graduation rate so low? The next steps tab is going to be super important for your family. It's going to give you some comments related to the FAFSA, the FAFSA form that you completed. It, it might tell you, hey, you, you made an error on this line. It might be more vague. Um, again, this is a change. Additional documentation um, that the schools may be requesting and general information that does not require action. One pro tip I'm going to tell you that I discovered through my daughter's financial aid process this year was once we got the, the bill from the college um, and we compared the FAFSA information with the aid package that they had prepared with the bill, we set all three of them down. And what we found was that the actual bill was not itemized. And we found that they were charging thousands of dollars for health insurance. And the way that we avoided having to pay that thousands of dollars was just to submit our um, health insurance cards. So there's a pro tip. You might want to ask for an itemized bill because sometimes they like to sneak things in. So um, do your homework as much as possible. And remember that it's just like um, any other loan that you've ever applied to read the fine print. So um, general tips, complete the form regardless of your economic status. You might think that I make too much money. We're not going to qualify. I'm not going to take the time to do it. But like I've said, um, there's private scholarships available through the colleges and there's merit scholarships and things like that that can be awarded um, and it could save you some money. Um, another thing to remember is you have to renew it every year. It's not a one and done thing. You have to go in every year and redo the forms. Um, even if you didn't qualify the previous year, always fill it out. Um, you're going to fill out changes in family income, um, anything else that might factor into eligibility, any changes that you have to make. Um, every year it has to be done for the government aid and also those private um, scholarship and aids. And then again, like we said, and we cannot say it enough, apply as early as possible. This year it's December. Um, so apply in December and get everything submitted. Remember, both parent and student have to submit, sign and submit in order it for, for it to flow through and be processed. Um, so important in getting that extra money that might be available because it will run out. More tips, always apply for free student aid, always look for grants first, then look for scholarships. You do not need to pay back free student aid as long as you meet the obligations. So there could be programs in your town that you want to look at. Beware of student aid offers that seem too good to be true. A lot of times they will come in the mail on a one-sheeter. My daughter got several that said, oh, hey, we're going to give you $100,000 for college. What they really meant was uh, 25000 over four years, which sounds great mm -hmm. even still, except um, tuition was seventy five. So there you go. Um, be sure you read um, the, the offers. Your mail is going to be booming if you're in the market for a, fa a FAFSA. Um, a, a, yes, your information is out there. Every college in the world knows you, you're ready. Um, educate yourself about all the different types of loans. Do your homework. Look at the interest rates, um, just like you would do if you were doing any other form of financing. I do just want to um, add on to that, that schools do it differently. Um, my daughter had one school that did the same thing, said you're getting all this money and it looked amazing. And then when you read down further, it was over four years. And then another school um, would give it to us per year. 
So make sure you're really looking at that because that's where they get you with that. It, you know, seemed amazing. And I do recommend like Googling different scholarships for it may be what their area of interest is. They may be like an excellent writer or like there's scholarships for everything. It's just a matter of finding them. Luckily, my daughter was super um, motivated to get as many as she could. And, you know, they were like some were 500, some were 1,000, some, some, you know, were a contest and things like that. So it, it adds up. It helped pay for books and supplies and things like that. Um, but if you Google, the, my daughter is into art, so she Googled different art scholarships and they would give her the criteria she would submit it and um then they would let her know if she won or not a lot of times delegates will um give some money so it doesn't hurt to reach out um and see what may be available and they sometimes have forms you can fill out for that also so i wouldn't rely just on the fafsa forms because there's a lot of private companies um and organizations that give scholarships also. Additionally, most universities will have a scholarship page associated with the university that um, recommends scholarships for students to apply to in, in bulk. And sometimes they have one application, just like they do for um, entrance into college. Um, now they have the the, the common app for college entrance. Sometimes universities will have something like that and you have to log into their portal. So that's why we want you to work on narrowing um, your college choices um, timely so that your student isn't filling out all of these different applications and writing all these different essays at nine different universities until they pick. Um, so you're going to um, want to look at that as an option as well. Additionally, the program in which your child is attending, if it's a high needs area, there might also be funding for that. So you're going to want to talk to your major um, professors and the people in the field in which your child is going to study because they also sometimes know of things and programs. For example, there is a high need right now for um, uh, science and, and um, things in the sciences. And so there are um, aid um, scholarships available from some of the companies that are looking to hire, such as Merrick, Johnson & Johnson. They offer those scholarships, but I wouldn't know them as a parent who um, who isn't in that world regularly, but her teachers who do this um, routinely, they, they knew to apply to some of those places. And that goes for every field. For example, the electrical trade right now is, is really looking for people. So is HVAC. So there are some opportunities there to get kids in um, for at a reduced cost to the family. Um, also, and I lost it, um, resources. Uh, there's a link to the 500-page slideshow presented by FAFSA on filling out the application. So if you want to peruse through it, feel free. Um, school counseling is a great resource um, to go through. Also, I remember what I was going to say now. Um, you are going to get bombarded with emails from your school counselor during senior year. Um, and it is easy to kind of maybe ignore them a little bit once you've um, gotten so many, but they do pretty regularly send out scholarship opportunities. So um, they are useful. Um, definitely check those emails that you're getting for them. Um, Lacey, it didn't include the boot camp because I edited it after you presented. So I'm putting a link to a FAFSA boot camp that's coming up. It's October 25th and 26th, and it is being presented by the U.S. Department of Education. Um, they're the experts. They can definitely get um, into much more specifics and details. Um, and actually, they're broken down into different sessions. Can I steal the screen from you? You can. It doesn't. I tried to get it again. It doesn't. Go ahead. 
Oh. Um. So in the link that was shared, um, you can go in, the tickets are free, but there are different seminars. You can select which ones you might be interested in, um, how to prepare, a prototype, um, the return to repayment, and then there should be one. Oh yeah, on the 26th. It talks about selecting an affordable repayment plan, the best college, using the college scorecard, and then they do a, a repeat session of the uh, prototype preview. So we, re, we presented information directly from them. It shouldn't look a whole lot different, but I'm sure they'll get much more detail into it. Like I said, we condensed quite a bit of it. So do you have any questions? You can just unmute and talk to us um, since uh, the other participants have left us. Tiffany's still here. Thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I've been I've been listening. Um, I, we we have a little bit ways to go, but I mean we've been having the conversations of what you want to do. You know, is there a specific school you want to go to? Um, for myself, I am in school, so, and I'm familiar with the FAFSA, so um, I guess for the most part, it's just going to be, you know, my daughter's decision where she wanted to go, you know. What, what grade is she in? Um, she's in 10th grade. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it, it comes up quick. <laughs> it do, it do, it do, it do. Um, I guess I'm, I'm seeing, I guess the college thing probably four times now. So, even with that, <laughs> and myself, um, so you know, it's it's more so making sure her grades is on point, mm -hmm. and looking at different programs. So, yeah. And you or her can reach out to the transition facilitator for your school. And, you know, we're a good resource to help identify programs that are within the state that are available. And, you know, depending on what specifically she's looking for, we can help you guys narrow it down. Yeah, because she's kind of up in the air right now. She is in the business program. She's okay. actually raving, so, you know. We don't have that much time. Trust me, I know. But, <laughs> you know, but also, too, you know, giving her that process time, you know, mm -hmm. without making her feel like she's pressured either. So, I will say this I don't even know if the students are using Naviance anymore, but that was very discouraging to my daughter because every college, her top three colleges that she entered in, um, yeah. cause she wasn't, she didn't do great on her SAT. It said she was extremely unlikely to get in. So she was very upset and just felt like she wasn't going to be able to go anywhere. And I said, just apply and see what they say. And she got into all of them. So with Naviance, you know, they, they run their computer generated numbers and yeah. I, you can't base, you know, your life decisions off of that. So, and I'm glad she didn't. But it right. definitely made her worried for quite a while. Well, I, I, I'm not speaking from experience. I did not do well for one of the SATs. And it wasn't like I didn't prepare or anything like that. But during the time frame, I actually became ill. So it, it kind of, you know, threw off as far as concentration, retention, and the whole nine. So... I was determined I was going to get somewhere. 
you know, for my undergrad. So, you know. Well, a lot of schools, they don't require it anymore. So we right. didn't even submit it for her because it wasn't going to help her. And right. she got in without it. So, it's and that's, that's the blessing. You know, everything in the sense that we went through, you know, they don't have to go through, um, I guess, that trial and error. Yeah. <laughs> and it looks like next year they're going to go to, is that it's pronounced Zeller Joyce? Um, yes. So she'll yeah, be yeah. using that new system. Hopefully. It it will not be as discouraging. <laughs> right. 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 Well, okay, guys. I mean, I just kind of hopped on, you know, just to see, you know, everything updated and that's all, really. You never know. It might be changed again by the time you apply for her. <laughs> Probably. I wonder if it's gonna change for me. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, if you have any um, other questions, you can email Lacey or I. Okay. Um, and we'll definitely get back to you. Thanks for joining and staying. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I mean, I could put my email in the chat and, you know, and just get all the information. Let me see. Um, let me put it in here. Sorry, and I guess we just stay in touch, you know. Yeah, definitely. Did you say she goes to Lock Raven? She does go to Lock Raven, yes. All right, perfect. What grade is she in? She's a 10th grader. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, this time is flying. She actually... Um, so last year it was kind of funny, really quick. Um, district actually reached out to me, and that's how she got into the business program because of her GPA. And so she had the opportunity to work at the Y. Um, oh, nice. yep. So the department had the ID, everything just went to spill, and she had an awesome experience. She wanted to work at the Y. She didn't want to do, you know, the government. So, I said, okay, you know. So hopefully next year it would probably be the Y. <laughs> oh, that's and, good. Yeah. Great experience. Yeah, I think Merit usually hires our students also. So, okay. If the Y isn't an option. Merit's a good one to look into also. Okay. Awesome sauce. So I'm excited. She is too, you know. So yeah, it's an exciting time. Yeah. Enjoy every minute of it. <laughs> I will most definitely, most definitely. We will most definitely, you know. So thank you again, ladies, for the sacrificing. So because it is thank a you. Have a good night. Thank you, you too, both of you. Thanks. You too. Okay, nice. Did you stop recording? Wait, I'm doing it now.